Hey, what's up guys? Welcome back to another video. Today we are going to go over some performance-based questions for the Security Plus. This is based off the CompTIA Cert Master Learn and Cert Master Labs for Security Plus certification exam. If you guys like my content, hope you hit, hit that like, hit that subscribe button, and let's get right into it. Okay, so we are doing an analyze indicators of malware-based attacks performance-based question. The defenses here are network administration and access based on least privilege, also multi-factor authentication. The vulnerabilities are Microsoft Office 365 security misconfigurations and Adobe products lacking latest security patches. The malicious actor's goal is intellectual property theft by exploiting increased remote work and work from home initiatives. So I selected for malware type, the options were fileless, logic bomb, pup, trojan or virus or worm. I'm going with virus. Uh, I think that would be the best way uh, to attach a virus to a file, like an Adobe file, uh, PDF rather, and send it to them through Outlook because that's part of Microsoft Office 365. That's that's how I think I would attack. Um, so I selected a malicious PDF file for the attack vector and the delivery method I selected spear phishing email. Now the payload, the options are bot, crypto ransomware, crypto jacking, crypto miner, key logger, remote access trojan, rootkit or spyware. I chose remote access trojan because that would give me the ability to get into their network, get onto their workstation, look around at the different files and see what there is to that is valuable to steal and then steal it, um, which is their goal. So scenario two, victims defenses. VPNs updated with the latest patches, extensive network security monitoring capabilities. So we need to be very quiet and we're probably not going to get in through any vulnerability in their VPN. The vulnerabilities are Microsoft products lacking latest security patches and MS Office docs with embedded content allowed. The malicious actor's goal is loss of availability and financial gain by encrypting data. So that right there makes me already think ransomware. We wanted to use ransomware because that renders their systems unavailable and it also gives the potential for financial gain by encrypting their data, which is what ransomware does. So the malware type. Malware type is going to be what? Let's see. They are lacking security patches in Microsoft and MS Office docs with embedded content are allowed. So again, I'm going to go with uh, with virus. Um, I believe we can embed a virus into like a Word document. It could be Trojan, um, but I think virus is the best answer here. Attack vector is going to be an MS Office file because their Microsoft products and Office docs are messed up. Delivery method, we could go with application vulnerability. Um, but again, I still think a spear phishing email is the best way to get who you want to get because, yeah. Yeah, I still think that's the best because we can target who we want to target. There's a reason most cyber criminals use spear phishing email as part of their attack methods. Um, the payload is going to be crypto ransomware. Um, because we want to we want to get money and we want to encrypt all their stuff. So, all right. If you guys disagree with me, let me know why. Uh, we will find out in a minute if I was right or wrong. So I'm going to go ahead and finish. Okay, 50%. <laughs> Not amazing. Let's see what they wanted. Um, four out of eight correct. When reconstructing the attacks, one must first analyze the victim's networks and systems to find attack vectors, delivery methods, and probable payloads. Scenario one, intellectual property theft by exploiting increased remote work and work from home initiatives. Uh, media outlets have run reports of state sponsored and other malicious actors exploiting the current worldwide COVID-19 pandemic. The rapid rush by many organizations to institute remote work has resulted in possible misconfigurations in cloud services and other areas. So the two avenues they can take are exploiting misconfigurations in cloud services or leveraging a convincing campaign to prompt the user to execute a file action that can exploit Adobe product vulnerabilities. In either case, a Trojan with embedded keylogger software could accomplish the attacker's goals if the attacker can bypass authentication mechanisms. The victim has cloud service misconfigurations and unpatched Adobe products. The best attack vector and delivery system based on the drop-down choices would be the use of a convincing phishing or hoax email with a malicious Adobe PDF file. Okay, so that's the one thing I got right was the PDF file. Delivery method was phishing or hoax email, which kind of seems like hair splitting from spear phishing to phishing or hoax, but they're going off the whole work from home thing, which I should include into with the whole COVID-19 pandemic. They were trying to build off of that. So that's that's the, the answer there. And then the and then the Trojan. Oh see, and then they wanted a Trojan as the malware type. Um which I guess yeah, I guess a Trojan would be 
a virus embedded in a document that looks like a document that you want. Um, technically, it's still also a virus, but that's okay. Uh, scenario two. Oh, it, what did it say? What the payload would be? Oh, the payload would be a key logger. So they wanted a key logger because they wanted to commit intellectual property theft. Huh. Okay. So maybe they're trying to steal the VPN password so that they can get onto the 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 land the company's land network or something like that. That's okay. I'll go with that. Uh, let's see. For number two. We got the MS Office spear phishing and crypto ransomware correct. The only thing here was the malware type. I'm guessing that was also supposed to be maybe a Trojan. Uh, let's see, scenario two. In either case, a Trojan with embedded keylogger software could accomplish the attacker's goals. Okay, yeah, so these both should have been Trojan and the payload on the first one should have been uh, keylogger. All right, well, um, not the best not the best results here, but that's okay, this is good practice. Um, may, hopefully this gives you an idea of what the performance-based questions on the test are like. I think a lot of people get nervous about these. It's not that big of a deal, guys. It's just like regular questions, except it's cooler because it's like real-life scenarios and you get to role play a little bit and think like you're a blue team on this company defending the network and so uh don't worry about it let's do one more you guys want to do one more let's do one more i want to do one more i got a 50 percent. that's not good i get 100 percent on this one an average 75 that's like almost a passing grade All right, so the scenario here is as a system administrator at your company's help desk, you are tasked with training two remote employees on how to validate their messages so that their sender identity and message integrity can be confirmed. Both employees frequently use public Wi-Fi and their internet traffic could often be at risk of modification from malicious users. As a test, you have them send a message that applies cryptographic techniques, fancy words, which allows you to check if other security issues exist that need to be addressed. I read that so fast, I didn't really process it, so I'm going to read it again, but I'll cut this part out so you guys don't have to watch it. Okay, the instructions are carefully review the sentences within the message verification process, then use the drop down selectors to fill in the missing components and complete the sentences. Alice creates the SHA-1 hash of the original message, then encrypts it with Alice's private key. Uh, no. Bob's public key. Yes. What are we trying to do here? We're, tr we're trying to do... We're trying to do RSA, I guess, uh, to create... No, obviously, Alice has to encrypt it with Alice's private key because it's her key. If she had Bob's private key, it wouldn't be Bob's private key. That's how she creates the digital signature. It's a hash of the message, so it's not the message itself. Next, Alice attaches the digital signature to the original message to deliver to Bob. That makes sense. That makes sense to me. Okay. Bob decrypts the original message containing Alice's containing Al, containing the digital signature using Alice's public key because that's the one that he has, right? That results in the SHA-1 hash of the original message. Yes. Correct. Bob then performs a comparison of the hash message digest results and finds his computed hash is, oh, it's different. Look, this one starts with six and this one starts with nine. That means someone's changed it. Therefore, can Bob confirm the message's integrity? No, he cannot. Oh, wait, I'm tripping. He decrypted the original message containing the digital signature and the and the and the hash was was the same so the digital signature was not messed with bob then performs a comparison of the hash message digest results and finds his computed hash is this so so i'm still thinking it's no but i'm, I'm confused hold on she made a hash of the original message she encrypted it with her key to create a digital signature. Then she attaches a signature to the message and delivers it to Bob. But she didn't hash that one. She should have hashed that one too, or something, but she didn't. So then Bob decrypts the original message containing the digital signature using Alice's public key, resulting in the SHA-1 hash, hash of the original message. So he has the original hash of the message that matches. But I'm, I think I'm getting something wrong here. But if, 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 
If I have all these first parts correct, I believe the answer here is no, but I think I'm missing something. So let's, let's see. Hopefully you guys are doing better than me. Six out of six. Okay. All right. That's a hundred percent. Nice. Nailed it. Hopefully you guys put exactly what I put because I got a hundred percent. Digital signatures are useful in proving whether a message has been changed. If you guys don't understand this topic, um, this is basically RSA encryption. I, I think. Yes, this is, I believe it's RSA encryption. Um, so just look up the different kinds of encryption. There's RSA, Diffie-Hellman, AES, um, and they're used in conjunction with one another to provide both confidentiality and um, integrity and authentication, I believe. Or definitely integrity and authentication. Those are the two most important ones, right? So look it up, do some reading, check it out. That is all I got for you guys today with these performance-based questions. Uh, if you enjoy this content, leave a like, hit subscribe. Thanks. Bye. Okay, I'm done.